Hello everyone. Uh, today is just a little thing I wanted to show you that I thought was fun. Um, these are little televisions I wanted to show you and uh, you may have seen them on YouTube. Uh, Techmon did a video about them and I'm not going to review them or anything. I just want to show you something cool I figured out. So um, these are portable televisions. This one's by Sony. This is a Watchman um, and it's a very interesting uh, little device and the idea was you have your little aerial antenna here and you can use your tuning dial similar to a radio and tune into a television program off the air. Now, of course, this was back when you could do that. Uh, you still can, except this is an analog tuner. So um, when the transition to digital tuners happened in the summer of 2006 here in the United States, uh, that all went away. So you can't really pick up anything on these anymore. Or could you? So that's the question I had here. Um, so I picked up this last weekend and uh, I thought it would work. I put in batteries, it doesn't. All you get is the sound. So um, I thought the screen may have gone bad. Now the screen in this particular model, is interesting. It's not an LCD screen. No, it's a CRT. Yes, a CRT. And not only is it a CRT, it is black and white. <laughs> so no color here. So this is the smallest CRT that I own. And the, the, the size of the CRT is so large that it's actually taking up most of this and projecting onto this little white part of the screen here. So unfortunately this one does not work, uh, but I do have one that does work and I'll show you that. It's a very similar model here. Uh, this even has a little strap and it came in a little bag. Now I got this one here because the blue one did not work. And this was at the Trenton Computer Festival. I picked it up for $10 and I was hesitant to get this because I thought, well, that one didn't work. What's the odds of this one not working? Well, the guy had batteries. This takes four AA batteries, both of them do. And uh, he turned it on and this is what I saw. So I'm greeted by static, which is fine because it's not picking up a signal. But uh, when you switch it on to the television mode, it turns on and it's quite, quite fun the way it uh, just springs to life there. You know, like a normal tube television would. Um, the screen is very small. It's black and white, of course, so there's no color, but hey, it worked. So I was, I was intrigued by that. So then I thought to myself, well, what could I display on this? Um, how can I display anything on this? Well, um, these two models are a little bit different. Um, I didn't do any research on them yet, but just by looking at them, they look very similar. Uh, the black one is a model FD2A and the blue one is a model FD10A. So um, I'm going to guess that maybe this was a cheaper model. And the reason I'm guessing is because you see there's some differences on these models, just some slight differences. So uh, the blue one does not have an external antenna port like the black model does. And the blue one also does not have a power socket port uh, for an external power supply like the black model does. And Lastly, I noticed that there's this little contrast adjustment type thing here. Uh, the blue one does not as well. And there's also um, this little contour adjustment here, which is, which is broken off, unfortunately. And this one doesn't have that as well. So, um, you know, this is a later model. I don't know if maybe this did some adjustments by itself, or maybe if it was just a cheaper model, that, that may have been what the case is. But the case is extremely, uh, extremely, extremely similar. Um, and uh, this one also has a little stand on the back, so you could actually just pop that up and lay it down and watch TV. Um, so, oh, and uh, I'm finding out more things about these all the time. And there's a little strap here. This doesn't have even a little area for one. So the black model is what we'll be focusing on today because this actually works, it turns on. Um, but then there's the problem of getting, you know, anything to watch on this. Um, a lot of these did have radios built in, so you could actually listen to the radio. Um, so a lot of those are just glorified radios now because a lot of these TVs rather are glorified radios now because you can't watch anything that's nothing's being broadcast on analog. Um, but this doesn't even have a radio. You know, you can see that it says VHF UHF. So um, what are we going to do here? Well, I have a plan. So I'm going to switch around the camera and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have the working Sony Watchman right here. And what I'm going to do is try and replicate something I read about. So um, we're gonna use a VCR, we're going to use an amplifier, and we're going to use an antenna. And so 
basically what we're doing here is the VCR has um, the ability to send a coaxial signal out. That's what this cable is for. So it's this is going, I'll show you in the back actually. So this is going out from the out terminal. We get that out uh, from the VCR. So we'll put the coaxial cable back in. I have some inputs here too, but we'll get to that later on. So this VCR is a bit beat up, but it still works. So uh, we have a coaxial signal coming out from the VCR, and that is going into this amplifier. And what this amplifier is doing is it's amplifying the signal. So it has an input here, and it has uh, a few outputs here. So uh, this is going out to this antenna, which should in theory boost um, the signal of this output of the VCR just a little bit, just enough to hopefully pick up something on this antenna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this VCR on. And uh, I'm going to press play here. There's an old Popeye videotape in here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the TV on. And I'm going to extend the antenna and I'm going to place it very close to that antenna there. And I'm going to tune in, hopefully around channel 3 or so, and we'll see if we can pick up anything. Oh, first we have to plug the output of the coaxial into here. The other cable I had here was actually plugged into this television behind me to make sure there was actually something coming out of this VCR. So anyway, let's try that again. So, we have this antenna very close to here, and around channel 3, we should be able to see something. Oh, there we go. Sure, the image is a bit degraded, but not bad considering we're using a homemade setup. It doesn't look much better when it's connected directly to the TV using a coax cable, but we're not looking for any perfect quality here. Since I know I could get some signal into this, let's try using the AV ports on the VCR. This will convert the signal over to the coaxial connection. I have a PowerBook G4 here that does have an S-Video and AV out capability. So I plugged that in to see how things looked. And, well, yeah, it works. The details are really difficult to see, even at a resolution of 640x480. But I could kinda see where I'm going. The screen looks much better in person as the camera isn't 100% focused and the CRT's refresh rate isn't helping. But hey, look, I'm online! Hmm, what else can I do? Oh, I know. <laughs> wow. All right, let's see how the game looks. I'm gonna make a single player match. I have to look at the power book here because the buttons are just blending in. All right, I'm gonna try and just use the TV. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the way it's meant to be played. I couldn't see him, but... <laughs> Even when using a newer color LCD TV, the results aren't great. Although some of that is likely due to the signal loss created by our crazy antenna setup here. Plus, it seems like this color LCD is a passive matrix display, so it's a lot blurrier than the CRT is. Anyway, moving right along. So that proves we can get some type of a signal out of this television using this very odd setup, but I was curious further if we can do anything to get something a bit more modern to show on here. And that's where this adapter comes into play. So this is just a cheap adapter I got off of eBay, and what it does is it takes an HDMI input and it outputs to either composite video or S-video. 
So what I can do is plug something into this, like a DVD player or an Apple TV or something like that, and then have this signal go to the VCR's input, which will then go through to the coaxial output and through to the antenna, and we should see something on the display. So let's give it a try. I have a third generation Apple TV here that has been collecting dust. So we're going to put it to work and see if we could do anything useful with it. So we'll just plug in an HDMI cable from the Apple TV to this adapter. And we'll plug in the power cable as well. Okay, so now we have the Apple TV displaying through glorious standard definition on the television behind me. And since that's just being split, we're going to try and see if we can pick that up on this TV here. So it looks like it has to be right next to the antenna, but you can actually see the Apple TV menu on the screen. And just to show you this isn't a trick or anything, I can navigate to everything. I'm going to go to YouTube and we'll search for, what else? Mac 84. It's a little hard to see on this TV, but it does work. And I'm going to pick, well, let's say the Apple 3 video I did. We'll turn the volume up. So you can see that um, <laughs> this is probably the best way to watch my content. No, this is this is just being silly. But um, yeah, I mean, it actually works. So we're using a lot of convoluted adapters and probably breaking some FCC violations only temporarily and locally um, just to see if this works. But I think that's very interesting that you can I mean, very closely uh, broadcast something to one of these old TVs. Now... This does have a little antenna external port there, but uh, I can't find the cable for it at the moment, but this would essentially do the same thing. Uh, some of these TVs actually have AV inputs. This one does not. This only has an antenna external port. The AV input would uh, allow us to bypass all of this craziness here and just take uh, our yellow uh, and red, oop, out of focus, our yellow, uh, red, and white cables, or just the yellow and white if it's not even stereo, and just put it right directly into the television. So um, that's basically what we could do here. But we're not done yet. I want to try one more thing that's uh, always been a little bit of a curiosity of mine. So ages ago, I got this at a yard sale, and this is just a, a wireless camera. And so it's like a security camera. It has a little mount type tripod thingy here, and it's wireless. So this outputs an RF signal, and you can or uh, wire the signal rather um, and you could probably see where I'm going with this here I want to see if I could display the uh, output from this camera onto this television here now the tricky thing is this camera does not have any adjustments so uh, usually there's been a there was a receiver that went with this sort of like a set so you would uh, plug that receiver into your television and you know that would be that um, but it does have outputs here, so it has uh, video and audio, but I want to try to see if we could do this wirelessly. So what I am going to do, uh, as I do have a power plug uh, for this, I'm going to plug this in and uh, well, if it works, it works. If not, I guess we'll find out very soon, but uh, there is a, a little power LED here and there was some tape over that, I guess, to be secure at one point, but let's plug it in and see what happens. All right, well, the camera is on. You can tell by the little red light there. I probably have to change the, uh, the channel here. See if anything is picked up here. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> uh, let's see if we can point the camera at the TV. Yeah, so th th this is, see, we're, we're doing things live here. This is, <laughs> this is the phone that's capturing the TV. <laughs> wow, this is, <laughs> I didn't expect this to work. This is pretty cool. So the antenna's, 
have to be, I can't stop laughing, this is too funny. The antennas seem to have to be pretty close to each other to do anything. If I bring the camera, oh, actually, no, it's actually pretty good. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be wireless, so it's not supposed to be right next door, but uh, this antenna is definitely not designed to pick up uh, these exact frequencies, but by tuning it, uh, it seems to be working okay, so yeah. Let's see, let's see how far this could go. I'm gonna put this on the tripod here. On its stand, rather. Okay, well, I'm right next to the antenna right now. And, um, you know, you can see the image, it's a little fuzzy. I'm gonna put batteries in the camera so we'll be able to see if um, there's, you know, what the distance is on this thing. Because I have the camera plugged into a, a power cord right now, so it's not really portable. Okay, well, we're now running on battery power, and I guess it kind of still works, so let's see how far this thing could go. So, unfortunately, the answer is not far at all. Um, when I just go a few feet away, let's say six feet or so away from this antenna, the signal really starts to degrade, and just, you lose it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> obviously this is a, a weird thing to try out, but hey, um, it's pretty cool, don't you think? So that's about it, really. I was just tinkering around with this and thought I'd share it with you guys, and uh, I hope you found it as interesting and uh, quirky as I did. It is sure a lot of fun tinkering around with these things and seeing what you could do with them even after their uh, useful life has quote-unquote ended. But that's really all for today, so I thank you very much for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time right here on Mac84. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. And if you're feeling generous, you can get exclusive content and early access to my videos by supporting me on Patreon.